Hi guys, so you join me here today, we're actually at Lindome again today, but today we'll be fishing on the strip lake. A little bit different to usual, obviously we're coming into spring now, a lot of people start going fishing and we've also had a lot of people join fishing in the last couple of years or so, so this video is all about going back to basics. As anyone does, we all look to YouTube for advice and ways to improve and when you're flicking through there's not many videos about right at the beginning how to start pole fishing, what you need, so this video is going to be all about that. I'm also going to do one about feeder fishing today but that's going to be on another video in a couple of weeks so keep an eye out for it. So now let's get on the box, go through it and see if we can catch you a couple of fish. Right guys so we're going to start right at the beginning so when you get a pole it'll usually come in the tube and have a cap on the end. I'm going to take out just a few sections, all the sections are actually stacked inside each other and that's how we transport it. So all the sections fit inside the main pole and come into sections like this. So they're all tapered, so if we take a section out, just use four sections today, put them out, and then as you can see, like I say, they're tapered at one end and get a bit fatter at the other. So this is the male section and the male section goes into the female section and give it a little bit of a twist. Go down, male section into female and give it a twist. And then again with that. So that is actually the pole now assembled. So with poles, same as anything, they come in a variety of different, obviously lengths and prices. But if you're just starting out and wondering where to start, I'd definitely start with a margin pole. These are a bit shorter in length, but a lot stronger as well. So obviously the higher up you go, the better carbon you get and they do become a little bit softer, if anything, because you're going for the lightness and stiffness. With a margin pole, they're a bit more durable and great for when you're first starting. So to the pole, you normally get a couple of top kits, I'd say. And with the top kits, like if you're starting out at a place like this, Lindome, commercials, Two that I'd recommend for all round are probably 11 and a 13. The 11 is soft enough for fishing in front of you, you'll catch anything, it'll come out on the strike, but it's got enough power to be able to pull and get the fish in. And the 13 is just that little bit stronger, so you could fish down the edge with it, chance of catching bigger fish, but you're still going to be able to keep them under control. So when we talk about top kits, these are the top sections of the pull. So the pull that I've just put together this goes on to the end. So you've got the elastic which runs either, this is on a side puller, you can get them on a bottom puller or one that goes inside. And it runs all the way through to the end where you can um, connect your rig, sorry. And that's the elastic that we're talking about. So that is a 13 at the moment. But there will be a link in the description to a video that I've already produced about elastics rating from anything from a size 2 or 3 right up to a 17 to a 19 and I'll cover all the different ranges, what we do, what I'd use them for and what might suit you. So now let's get on box and I'll get a bit more into the fishing. So now we're set on box you've got to make sure that you've got your rollers positioned perfectly. This will help stop any breakages or anything like that, else we're shipping in and out very smooth. So as you can see here, it literally just slides straight out, no complications. Put that back in, there we go. It's all very well balanced. Obviously I've got two decent rollers here that are very stable. If you're looking for rollers, make sure they're stable and not going to tip over in the wind or anything. As some of you might just be starting out, you might only have one roller and getting the position of this right is even more important than getting the tube right as with one you've only got one balance point so if it's too close to you it's very hard to ship out and you will have a bow in your in your pole at the back and obviously you don't want to make any stress points in the pole so move the pole roller a bit further back but if it's too far back when you're shipping out it'll literally it'll drop and the weight will come down and obviously you're causing more stress points there. You want it just so you can ship onto it and there's no stress points and you can ship back out smoothly. So once all this pole's set up, obviously we've got our top kit out, the next thing we need to do is a rig. So you can actually now buy these pre-tied, which is brilliant if you're just getting into it, unsure of how to make a rig, whether you're going to enjoy pole fishing, obviously it gets quite expensive when you have to buy all the individual components such as your float, your lines, your shot, 
rubbers, whereas you can just literally buy it already pre-made, as good as what I could tie myself and the brilliant. Comes with a hook on as well and a hook length, but we do sell additional hook lengths as well in case obviously you get snapped or you just want to change. So they're brilliant. These do actually come in three meter lengths, which three meters is more than enough for most places on commercials like this. So what I'll do now is I'll get the top kit and show you how to attach the rig to the top kit. So now all I'm going to do, take the rig out, just put my packaging just in my bag for now so it don't blow away. And then you'll see these slide around at, at the side and there's a loop on one side. So if you find the one with a loop on and then take the loop off. So if you just pull it that. There we go. And as you can see there's a loop on the end of there. And then what we do then is attach this to his Dacron. So if you come closer we'll show you what how to do that. So make a little loop, put that loop through the loop that's already provided and then you've got like a sliding a sliding loop knot. To that just put it over the little connector over the Dacron part and pull tight and as you can see that is now attached. If I pull the line it pulls the Dacron. So as I said these rigs come at three meters which is way more than what we need on here today but I'll show you how we know that so I'll unravel it so it's literally just wrap round the winder just keep going like I say it's quite deep is a rig but some places are deep and you'd much rather have it too long than too short And then we need a plummet. So if you get your plummet out, attach your plummet. Oh. Just put it through the ring and into the foam. And this is how we find out how deep it is. So that's now attached. Put the top kit on the same as before, give it a little twist and ship out to where we're fishing. Then important that you get a far bank marker as well, so something that's not going to move, something that you can line up with. Go down and as you can see it's gone slack. So your float's tight, when the weight hits the bottom it goes slack. So we know that it's too deep is the rig, bring it back and we'll take a bit of line off. Put it on there, maybe float down a little bit. And then just tie another loop. Now all we need to do, we need to take the other loop off that we've just put on and then attach the new rig. With a spare bit of line, just wrap it up and just make sure that you dispose of it. So I'll just put that in a pocket and I'll get rid of it after. Line up with his far bank marker. And we still need some more off that yet. So just keep repeating the process till we get it right. So it should be easier to work with now the the length of line's a bit shorter. So just pull his float down with a good foot or so.
there because it's quite windy today just a little bit <laughs> obviously want a little bit more float on the bottom so that's just about right plumb up just to the bottom of the body so now we know that that's right I'll come back and tie my length of line and it's important to add a back shot when it's this windy it just it helps stabilize your float and hold it still so this is the 4x14s obviously it's not that deep but it's more the wind that's going to be towing and making the lake tow so that's why we need a heavier float than normal today so once we've set a pole up we obviously put us rig on had a plumb around found where we're going to fish the next thing to do is introduce a bit of bait most poles do come with a cupping kit obviously cup on the end attaches to your pole you ship out and these are the usually the same length as your top kits so all your bait is going down the same hole if you haven't got one of them not to worry do actually sell the cad pots which the biggest size i think the mega cad pots are literally as you can see not much different to the normal small cupping kit pot and these are perfect they literally push it on to the end and that's serving the same purpose as what that is get loads of bait in there ship out usually they do come in the smaller sizes for introducing little bits of bait and often but if you haven't got a cupping kit or if you want to feed a lot of bait regular one of them is the way to go and they just slide onto the end of your pole as so so today we're actually just going to be fishing maggots to start with we just want to get a few bites it's all about just getting them first few bites just put that on there so few maggots just in my cup just to kick cat start the swim put that there and then just ship out to your far bank marker where you've lined up with and that's where you've plumbed up and just tip the maggots in there just take your time obviously if wind blows just hold on to it ship out and when you're comfortable and you're lined up just tip your maggots in and that's it the swim has now started get us rig put a couple of maggots on and see if we can catch out so we're just about to go out now put a couple of maggots on just a couple of reds fed that little bit of bait so when you're shipping out obviously onto the rollers through your hands keep going and then once you get to that part put it onto your elbow use this top arm to hold on to it and push forward and then it just goes across both knees and then just lower your floating use your elbow just to guide the pole and then you're just holding on Once it's settled, oh, that's a fish. Strike, lift up. Just guide it through your hands onto your rollers. Keep guiding it back. And then take that section off, lift up, and your fish will come up. And just use your net under the fish, and there we go. A nice little chub. Look at him. Take the hook out and just pop him back. Here we go, we just add that little chub, which is a nice start. Just put a couple of maggots on again, repeat the process, ship the pole out in your hands, onto your elbow, and then lift it out and lower it in where we've put us bait and just hold on to it. So we're fishing maggots for now because we just want to catch anything, get a few bites. But as the session goes on, or if you want to catch a few bigger fish, it's um, a good change bait is pellets. These fish get fed pellets all the time, so you will catch on pellets, but obviously it's just not quite as fast as what maggots is. So if you want to catch lots of fish and fast, maggots are the way forward. There we go, that's another one. There we 
they go. Another lovely chub. Lovely chubbly. Hey. See if we can catch one more. Put a couple of maggots on. They love maggots to chub. Mix it up a bit, go red and white this time. There we go. Another nice little chub, I think it is, or a little silverfish on the maggots. I think it's about time that we put a couple of bit of pellet in. Put a pellet on the hook and see if we can catch one of them better fish. Little hybrid. There we go. If you want to catch fish like that all day, maggots is definitely the way forward. Getting bites and catching fish. You will still get F1s and carp as well. But now it's time to put a pellet on, be a bit more selective and see if we can catch a bigger fish. As you can see, then bigger baits, looks like we've caught them bigger fish, which is what we said. Then pellets are good for catching F1s and carp, whereas the maggots were really good for catching the chub. It's all about being selective. If you just want to catch a few fish, maggots are great, but if you want to single out a few of these bigger fish, pellets are awesome for that as well. Not to say you won't catch these on maggots, but if you're trying to single them out, it's always better to do it on pellet. Nice, lovely little F1. Just take the hook out. Look at that. There we go, I've got another one battling it in this wind. Lovely catching a few early on on the maggots, a few little chub. And now we've moved over onto pellets and started catching a few F1s. Just all about being selective with your baits. Lovely fish these are. There we go. Nice little F1. Just take a look out of him and then I'll hold him up for you. There you go. Hope you've enjoyed the video picked up a few tips and learnt how to use a pole, managed to get plenty of bites, got amongst a few F1s as well, had a right nice day apart from the wind and I'll hopefully see you on the bank sometime. <laughs>